Hi, I'm Jo from JH Leather, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to make two different coin purses that can attach to your key rings. Let's get started. So as always, these patterns are available to purchase via my website and whilst you're there, you can have a look at all the other pattern packs that I have for sale. Once you've ordered your patterns and you have them downloaded, you're going to want to print them off. And then we're going to roughly cut them out before sticking them onto some card to reinforce them and then we will cut them out accurately. So we are going to start by making the square coin purse and what we're going to do is start by transferring our pattern onto our leather. So information about what leather I use and where to purchase the leather is in the information pack that comes with the patterns. Once you've finished marking your pattern out, you can then cut this out. Now we've done that, we're just gonna mark where our turnover for the flap at the front is going to sit on the flesh side or the inside of what our case is gonna be. And then we're gonna use a number one edge tool and edge up around the flap from there. And then on the nice grain side, we're going to edge number one all the way around. And then we'll also edge the grain side on the loop that we're going to insert into the case. Now we've done that, we can do some staining and polishing of the edges. And once we've done some polishing, what we're going to do is using a warm crease, we're going to edge all the way around our case. Now, if you haven't already, transfer the holes for where your poppers are going to be and you can punch them and then attach your poppers. Now, you don't have to use poppers and there is information in the patterns about what other fittings you can use. Once you've done that, you can then skive the ends of your loop to nothing. And then you can glue these together around either your clip or your split ring. So what we're going to do next is mark on where that little loop is going to sit on our case. And we're going to glue this in place. So you might want to scruff up the edges here, especially on the actual loop itself, because that's going to be some smooth leather there. And this is just going to help the glue to stick a bit better. You can then glue the loop into your case. And then once we've done that, we're going to glue the long sides down as well. And once you've got that glued down, you're going to want to just tap the edges with a hammer just to get them nice and flat. And then what we're going to do is grab our dividers and we're going to start marking out for our stitch marking. 
Now my dividers are usually set to about three millimeters and we're gonna draw a line up each of those sides. Once you've done that, you can grab your stitch marker and we're gonna stitch mark all the way through. Now to protect your stitch markers, you're gonna want to be doing this onto something soft, which is why I am using this piece of card here, just to protect the teeth of my stitch marks. We're now ready to double hand or saddle stitch our little case together. And we're going to start by doing two back stitches. Now, when you're completing your back stitches, you want your second stitch to sit either above or below your first stitch rather than on top of it, because this is going to look a bit nicer, but it also means that stitch isn't going to wear because it's not going to be protruding out farther than the rest of the stitches. Once you've done that, you can then stitch the rest of your case as normal. And we're going to finish with one and a half back stitches so that the bottom end matches the top side. Once we've finished our stitching, we're going to start doing some finishing touches. So we're just going to sand the edges of our case just to get them nice and smooth. And this is going to give us a better surface to finish on when we now do our staining and polishing. One thing you can also do is add some Tolkanol to your edges to get them nice and shiny. And then we will recrease around the whole of the case. And then with your bone folder, you're just going to push that in around the seams just to get rid of any excess glue. Once you've done that, you can then pop your change in and start using the little case. So that is it for making the first of these two cases. And we're now going to move on to making the round case. So one thing I like about these cases is that you can make them out of some scrap leather. So they're great for practicing on, but also for using your scraps for something useful. What we're going to do is we're going to start by transferring our patterns onto our leather. And then we will cut these out. Now, depending on what sort of leather you're using, you may want to have the gusset inserted onto this case, just to give it a little extra room so you can fit a few more coins in. Now, once you've got everything cut out, we're going to take that little loop tab and we're just going to nick the corners. And then using our number one edge tool, we're going to edge all around the grain side of that loop. And we can also edge around the grain side of the front part of our case. And once we've done that, we'll flip that over and just edge on the flesh side just along that straight edge. 
on the main outer part of our case, we can number one edge all the way around on the grain side. And then on the flesh side, we're just going to offer up the front of the case and mark where that sits on our leather. And then we'll number one edge up from there between the two marks. Now we've got everything cut out, we can do some staining and polishing. And then we're going to use a warm crease and crease around each piece that we have cut out. So we're now going to start by transferring some of our making marks onto our cases if we haven't already done that. So you're going to want to mark where the popper is going to be on both the front and on the flap. And then on that main body, you want to flip that around and mark where the stitching is going to be. Now, if you're not using a gusset, you won't need to do that part of it. But if you are using the gusset, you will need to stitch mark both the front and the main body of the case. So you're going to use the dividers to mark that line around both pieces. And now we're going to punch the holes for our poppers to fit in. And now depending on the size popper you're using will depend on the size hole you will need to punch. And once we've done that, we can then follow that line that we made earlier with our stitch marker and stitch mark all the way around. So now we're going to start to prepare the loop. So what we're going to do is put our fitting in, whether it is a clip like what I am using here or a split ring, and we're going to hold that up to the case. So on your patterns, you will have marked where this loop needs to sit. And what you want to do is squeeze that tight onto your fitting and mark how close you can get with your stitching. Now this is going to vary depending on your fitting type, which is why it's not marked onto the patterns. Once we've done that, we can transfer that mark onto the other side and draw all the way around with our dividers. And then we're going to go around the same lines with our stitch marker. The next thing we're going to do with this loop is to skive the ends. So the side that we have done our stitching on, we're going to skive down to half thickness. And on the back part of that, we're going to skive that down to nothing. So now we've got the loop ready, we can glue that together around our fitting. And then once we've done that, we can glue it onto our case. So once our fitting has been glued on, we can then double hand or saddle stitch that in place. Now I'm going to be using double hand stitching for this and I'm going to be starting with two back stitches and finishing with one and a half back stitches so that both my ends match.
Once we've done stitching, we can now start to fit our poppers on. And then we're going to measure up our gusset. So the gusset pattern that you have is a bit long. So what we're gonna to need to do is work that around our case and mark it to the correct size. So we want that to be so it sits in between those marks that we made earlier on the back of our case. You can then cut that end square. And then we're going to start by gluing this onto the main body part of our case. So you want to carefully glue along one side of your gusset. And then attach this to the main body very carefully, making sure the edges are touching. Once that gusset has been glued on, we can then double hand stitch this onto our cover. And again, we will be doing two back stitches and finishing with one and a half back stitches. Once we've done that, we can then fold the gusset over on itself and get the front of our case glued on. Again, we want to make sure the front of our case, the edges line up with the gussets. And now we can double hand stitch this on. Again, starting with two back stitches and finishing with one and a half. Now this side may be a bit more awkward as we do have that gusset, so you might need to take your time with this. Once your case has been stitched together, we're going to use our bone folder and remove any excess glue from the inside of the case. And we're just going to rub that bone folder around the seam and it will just dislodge any glue that is there. Now we've done that, we can then do some finishing touches. So we're going to start by sanding the edges of our case to make them nice and flush. And then we will re-stain and polish the edges. You can also add some tulkanol to the edges of your leather at this point to get them really nice and shiny.
and then we will go around with a hot crease and recrease the whole of our case. So that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed watching and if you did, please click the thumbs up button and subscribe for more videos and tutorials and I shall see you in the next video.